G'day, I'm Clive and welcome back at the Armadale Reptile Centre with Lucy. Hi. <laughs> We're going to be talking about the grey kangaroo today. Yes. So, let's start is how big do the grey ones grow? Typically 1.4 up to 2 metres they could get to. So they're still significantly big. Um, but they don't get as big as the red kangaroo, which is the, the biggest that we have. Um, and it's the one that people will be seeing around Perth. Um, and unfortunately, it's the one that people's cars meet on the roads um, in, the, in the more uh, rural suburbs of Perth as well. So um, they are around. They are definitely around. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're the ones, if you're walking on the Bibble and Track, they're the ones you'll most likely see because the Bibbulmun track actually goes through the main area up there. We've got a visitor here. Let me show you. Hello. Hello. The plovers are calling. They're warning. There's something around. Oh. And that's why they've started to get a little bit... They know that there's something... Um, and then these guys are now calling. We have a pair of wedge tail eagles that come around sometimes. Oh, so I wonder yeah. if that's what they're um they're calling about. Mm -hmm. This is one of our oldest residents. She um she came to us uh, as a joey. She was uh, actually shot whilst in her mother's pouch. So um, someone had shot her with a shotgun oh. and um, the pellets had lodged inside her body and she went to the vet. X-rays showed that they were far too close to her spine so they couldn't do any operations or anything like that. And um, so she had physiotherapy, she had acupuncture, she had all manner of different things to get her up and going. And she can um, move around now. She's just got a little bit of um, almost like arthritis looking in one side of her hip where she can't flex it um, in the best way possible and then um, and then she's lived the rest of her life with us and she's an old girl now so that was that the average size a female will get or yeah they can get a little bit bigger than that um, uh, but that's yeah that's not 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 on the small side um, for her, but being a, um, she had a difficult start to life, it's possible that she didn't have the correct nutrition right at the beginning when she was with mum and how long she was in there on her own, we don't know. And then with us, it takes a lot for them to adjust between, you know, being in the wild and then being in captivity. Um, the fun of working with animals. <laughs> yeah. I'd say it's beautiful, so it's a little privilege. But, um, oh, and you can see her as she's moving, how she's dragging her toe. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. That's the side of her foot, her side of her body that was shot. So that toe, that leg is not 100% strong. So quite often that toe, that long third toe that they have to help them stabilize, it flips back on itself and she drags it. So she can't go very far. Um, and she tends to hop a little bit sideways. A bit, a bit of paralysis for me. So, um, yeah, in some degree, or the muscles have, have just not been um, used enough and then they haven't, uh, haven't got the same range of motion that they used to. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much more we could do for her than as much physiotherapy as we could manage. Just give her as much love as possible, is it? Well, she... She's been with us for so many years that clearly whatever we did is uh, yeah. is worked. Yeah. yeah. Good. So how long do they live? So in the wild, you're looking at about ten years, um, but in captivity they can get twenty, uh, if not slightly more than twenty, um, and that's just a pure. There's a there's a great deal of um, stress elements that happen to a lot of these marsupials are pretty prone um, to what's called stress myopathy so um, it's basically when they get so stressed their heart just can't take it anymore um, so when we're working with marsupials in particular 
that's something that we have to be incredibly conscious of is that anything we do with them um, are we causing them extreme stress um, and the thing with stress myopathy is it might not present until a few days later um, and then they just pass away mm. so it's a difficult one to, to manage the stress myopathy and it's um, it's just one of those things they are very high strung animals um, particularly when they're younger because they have a lot of predators um, and then uh, when they're older too they still stay quite high strung so yeah you just do your best to stay calm and quiet yeah yeah, yeah. Um, uh, hopefully over time with them being with us they re recognize us not as a threat um, but things like they still can't help, even though they've been here for years, some of them, they still can't help reacting to loud bangs or crashes or um, even wild weather. Just the, the, the wild weather itself can sometimes be upsetting. Um, it's just one of those things. So to bushwalkers, don't go chasing them or making noises no, and shouting. No, no. Stay calm, quiet and slowly wander on. Yeah, yeah. Are the dingoes? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the dingoes in the background. Yeah, because the other thing they can do is, particularly if they've got joeys, mother and joey can get separated in, in stressful yeah. times, or joeys have been known to fall out of pouches as well when mum keeps going. So that's a that's a big thing um, with them as well. Mm. Yeah. So they're the same as the reds in the, what they eat? They are, yeah. There's not much difference in diet um, for them. Um, so that, that's all the, the grass, the the trees, the bushes, the bark. And... Yeah, yeah. So they have a very high cellulose diet. So that's a lot of plant material in their diet. Um, and because of that, they've got a special organ called the cecum, which is uh, in the vicinity of the intestines. Um, and that's got little, like, little microorganisms in it that helps break down that cellulose. Um, and it's how they're able to have good water content from the food they eat as well. So they don't have to um, rely on water sources so much they still need it don't get me wrong they still need it but um they can get a lot of water content from the food they eat mm. as well so are, are they it's very uh alike to the red when it comes down to the water or because yeah of the no it's a it's a macropod thing yeah. that they are able to do that um yeah because you've got some animals that where they live in one climate and another climate and they're They've got slight, slight variations. Yeah, variations. Yeah. 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 Um, no, pretty much majority of the macropods, so the the kangaroos and wallabies and things like that, because they have all very, very, very similar diets. Just maybe species of tree or species of shrub. Um, they all have the a very similar um, process to be able to um, digest it. And their mating system, the this is it the same as the. Uh, the, the red kangaroo, where it's it is. all year round, or is it only... It's, it's all year round all that year they round. can mate, yeah. but spring, summer is peak. Yeah, um, and that's mostly because of the um, uh, abundance in food. It's the best time for food. Um, so they do most of their mating kind of early spring, late winter, and then the joeys are coming through in spring sort of thing. So, and, and the joeys, you want to tell us how they start? Yes. How they so, progress? Um, you can see how big the kangaroos are, um, but when they're born from mum, they're only the size of about a little tiny jelly bean. Um, they're pink, they're hairless, their eyes are closed, they pretty much have no senses whatsoever. Um, the only sense they have is to crawl up mum's fur, so they crawl their way up mum's fur, um, jump into the pouch, and then they attach themselves to a teat. Um, for the first um, little while, they're actually fused to that teat, so they yeah. can't la let go of it. Um, and they're suckling um, all the time. And then as they get bigger, they, um, they're able to detach from that teat. Um, and then uh, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually legs start popping out, head starts popping out of the pouch. They get brave, they jump out. Um, they start to eat, you know, what mum's eating. They need to go back then still to drink milk. Um, and then around, so that's around the nine month mark that they're able to come out and they're exploring around. Um, and then around the, the year to year and a half mark is when they're, well, they should be fully independent. And, and around that point, that's when you end up with a new jelly bean, Joey? Can do, yes. And we were saying about the grey one in the other video that they can actually uh, restrict the growth of that Joey before it's yeah. released. So what's, what's interesting, and there's 
as far as I understand, there's no explanation as to why. Um, most macropods can have embryonic diapause, so they um, have mated, they have formed their embryo and they can pause it. The western grey kangaroo, for some reason, doesn't have this ability. Why is, to me, is unknown. I'm not sure why. Um, so they seem to do okay anyway without it. I don't know if it's something to do with the fact that they're highly restricted to the south um, west coast and then over into um, South Australia. So it could be that the abundance of food in the south west coast is good enough that they don't need that extra evolutionary help sort of thing to, to maintain their numbers. Yeah, but yeah, why they don't, I've never ever had an answer, to be honest. No, no people have got an answer knowing that there's no answer. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, otherwise, and um, it, it is a bit sad because they are a highly iconic um, and known animal, um, but there is a, a bit of a negative discussion around them as being pests, um, particularly to farmers um, and things like that. Um, a great deal of that comes from the fact that they live in mobs, so they're family groups, they can live in very large groups. So there's a very big perception of them being highly, highly abundant um, everywhere. Um, but that's just their life strategy to be in large mobs. Um, you'll find that they don't have a great deal of grazing land like they used to. Um, and farmers don't like the fact that they graze on the, the stock, the production stocks land. So basically where they actually live along the coast and that one here, not far from the coast, is where all the humans are building their homes yeah. near water. So they get cold and because they are in such large pods yeah when they call then that pod can basically be destroyed yeah and there's no actual uh blood link to any others so that that actual pod's gone now once mm. that's happened and you've got to rely on other pods which are slowly getting to and yeah. working their, unfortunately they're working their way around to which personally i shouldn't have a opinion but no they shouldn't be called no no there's if if it's going to happen there does need to be a lot more discussion into it and it needs to be uh a properly proposed sort of thing at the moment anyone with a gun can just do it and um it's sad because there are fines to to destroy native wildlife um but it's one of those things that most people turn a blind eye to and they Mm. They think it's a, it's 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 a sport. It, it's for some people it's sport. So um, it, it's a difficult one, and it's one that's generated a lot of discussion, um, not just in the like conservation um, industry, but um, just everyone else as well. So. so give us something positive to end on. Something positive to end on. Yeah, Apart from um, they're, they're, they're beautiful. They're timid. Well, they're very, they're very cute, and if you're very lucky to see some of them, so some of them, um, they have very, they're grey kangaroos, so they're fully grey. Um, it's hard to tell the difference between males and females in that respect, but some of them are very adorable because they've got um, like a white spot on their head or, or anything like that. So that's really cute to see them with like sometimes like a little star or a little love heart or a nice little um, shape on their heads as well in this little white star. And having a privilege of that lovely little one just coming up then, so... Yes, I think we've only got one that's got a little white mark on its face. I don't believe the others do in here. But you're very lucky if you see one with a nice little, nice little cute little forehead patch on it. <laughs> that so cute. that's very, very positive. Cute. We can end on that positive note. Oh, there you go then. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have and you're not a subscriber, remember, go down below, click on that subscribe button then click on the notification bell next to it and select all so you can see more videos like this and if you are already a subscriber again i thank you very much and hit the like button thumbs up